So Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Bucks are NBA champions, and Giannis was just absolutely incredible tonight. One of the best performances in NBA history. 50 points, 14 rebounds, 5 blocks. He was a menace defensively all night in the paint, switching on to perimeter players. He's incredible. And then 17 of 19 from the free throw line. That's just absolutely incredible. Almost 90%. Uh, yeah, he was just so, so good. Getting to the rim, scoring mostly on the inside, though he had one three, hitting his free throws, which is not something you see from him every day, but being a smart player, knowing when to pass, set up a couple of very important three-point shooter, um, three-point shots, knowing when to screen and when to create separation for Middleton or Drew Holiday, and then I mentioned defensively the blocks, being in the right position, and just how his length and size bother, bothered bothered Aiton and Booker and Chris Paul all night. He was absolutely incredible. And what has he not done? 26 year old, six years old, one MVP, one Finals MVP, presumably, unless there's like a massive shock. But yeah, he's one Finals MVP, one Defensive Player of the Year, one Most Improved Player. I mean, he's just done it all at such a young age and. I'm really very happy he won it in Milwaukee, rewarded for staying in a small market and staying with the team he, that drafted him. Uh, you know, obviously, he could have not signed the extension. He could be a free agent this offseason, but uh, he's not. And I'm very happy that he stayed in Milwaukee and he uh, got this championship because he really deserves it. Uh, not only that, but just these whole playoffs. Uh, he's been great, super consistent. Every night, it f seems like he drops 30 and 10. And yeah, like helped them pass the Nets, which was obviously the big win. And people even forget that only like two weeks ago, or maybe a bit more, he he uh, had that knee thing against the Hawks where he landed weird, weirdly. And to come back and put up one of the most dominant finals performances of all time is just absolutely, absolutely incredible. I mean, he was him and Bobby Portis were the only players for the box who I would say had an above average game for their standards. Like Middleton, he was okay, but only 17 points. Drew Holiday was great playmaking, was great defensively, bothered Booker, but had like 12 points and was like 4 of 19 shooting. Uh, Brooke Lopez was decent. Tucker and Connaughton both with zero points, but both key defensive plays and key rebounds and then Teague zero points though he only played two minutes but really it was really just Giannis all night I mean without his free throw his free throw shooting the Bucks easily lose this game this game just without him being so so dominant man he was just absolutely incredible tonight as he has been the whole postseason uh yeah and then Portis was also really good tonight uh had a couple threes I believe but also finishing inside. I can't remember all of his buckets. I know there's one where he pump faked on three, then came in for a mid-range, which was really important. Had like a little right-handed floater on the baseline. I mean, just very timely baskets. And then defensively, uh, they kept him in down the stretch or for most of the fourth quarter. And he was holding up against Booker. Obviously, he committed a few fouls and had that, that one where he got the tech. But... I thought held his own defensively and provided a lot of energy and a lot of key baskets for the Bucks. Uh, yeah, just great. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it was just a lot of great performances, a, a great, great performance from Giannis. I mean, just 50 of the 105 points the Bucks scored. I mean, that's almost half. And yeah, he was just incredible. Uh, some other things, the Bucks rebounded very well. They used their size advantage. At one point, they had a Lopez, Portis, and Giannis all on the court at the same time. And it was actually working in the first. And yeah, they just used their size advantage really well in this series. And in this game in particular. Uh, some other stuff. I mean, yeah, like both teams to start looked a bit nervous. A lot of turnovers committed in this game. Uh, yeah, the Bucks had 18 turnovers and the Suns 14, both very high numbers, and they, both teams were struggling offensively to start. Uh, but then the Bucks, mostly fueled by Giannis, uh, got a, going towards the end of the first quarter and took a lead uh, to end the first quarter. But then the Suns came back in the second quarter, and Bridges was doing a little bit more for the Suns offensively. 
uh, he had a pick and roll. He had an off ball, off ball three. Um, he had a few tra- transition opportunities. I thought they relied on Bridges a bit more, which is probably necessary. Though he only ended with seven points, so they sort of went away from him in the second half. But he had a little stretch where he was doing good things for the Suns. And you know, uh, to think about the Suns in the future a little bit, they're going to need Bridges to step up and be, you know, one of, a guy who can do a little bit more off the dribble. Uh, I think that's one of their paths to success and maybe getting back to the finals. Uh, the Suns were trying to match Aiton's minute with minutes with Giannis, but it didn't totally work because Giannis was just going through Aiton and dominating him on both ends of the ball, and Aiton also got in foul trouble, uh, like in the third. So it was a good strategy for a little bit, but you know it's hard to say anything the Suns did against Giannis worked, especially when he had 50 points. Uh, Middleton also got his third foul in the second quarter, but Mike Budenhoser kept in the, kept him in the game, which I like personally. I think if it's a player who's not a big man, who because they're more likely to get in foul trouble, uh, just trust your player. And uh, he, Middleton had a few important baskets for the Bucks down the stretch, and yeah, I like that Mike Budenhoser kept him in the game. And then, as I mentioned, Drew Holiday was really struggling. One of the reasons. Uh, the Bucks weren't up at halftime, um, and he really struggled all night, uh, but just overall almost had a triple-double, which really went under the radar. 12 points, 11 assists, 9 rebounds, but yeah, so not really efficient or playing too well offensively, but had one big three, I believe, and then also throughout the game, uh, good playmaking, great defense on Booker, like forcing steals, picking them up full court, uh, or he, sometimes he was on Chris Paul too a lot. Uh, yeah, same, a bit of this similar things, just making him uh, go full court, pressing, uh, all that. Uh, great from Holiday. Uh, you know, I bet the Bucks are really, really happy about that trade they made for him, uh, even though he hasn't been great offensively. Just the defense... Uh, just so so important and then another guy you can just trust and keep on the floor um yeah the Suns tonight I mean I don't think they were terrible uh they didn't hit their threes very well neither team did um and then defensively I thought it was pretty decent apart from Giannis going off and then offensively I mean Booker only 19 points Chris Paul played pretty well 26 points he got to the to his mid-range quite a bit, especially when Brook Lopez was out there using the pick and roll, uh, that sort of thing, to get to the mid-range. And yeah, he really kept them in it for lo- long stretches of the game, I thought. Um, and he was really, really important for the Suns. Uh, yeah, and then you, we get to the third quarter. I think Giannis had 20 points in the third quarter, just getting to the rim, using his body, using the angles. I thought Aiton, they mentioned it on the broadcast, he was sort of giving him an angle and didn't want to build the wall and, you know, just take the Giannis contact on the chest. And Giannis really took advantage and was absolutely dominant. Yeah, and then Aiton also was in foul trouble, which meant there was some of Frank Kaminsky. And then Crowder was on Giannis, and it wasn't any better because Giannis is way taller and way stronger than him. And yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Just an incredible performance from Giannis and very happy the Bucks, a small market team who built through the draft and then made the move this offseason for Holiday. I think they really deserve this championship. You know, obviously there was injuries and it's it was a season uh, where players were out and some of them were injured, but... You know, you, you can only play the team in front of you, and I thought they the Bucks went through real adversity the whole postseason, facing the Heat in the first round and getting over uh, the Heat, a team that beat them just a year ago uh, or less than a year ago. Then facing the Nets, who were a super team. I know they had the Harden injury and the Kyrie injury, but they were down 3-2 in that series and to rally back and to win that Game 7. And then facing the Hawks, who, you know, are a good team and made it to the conference finals and they go big they switch uh, Mike Budenhoser I thought I, I I'm a bit higher on Mike Budenhoser now 
I thought he made the adequate adjustments throughout the postseason. Maybe not as much as people would want, but I think enough to get them to the finals. And then in the finals, the Suns barely shot any corner threes. And he forced them into tough mid-range shots. And then, off at, and then he also was willing to play Brook Lopez less minutes and willing to go small and willing to run Chris Middleton, Giannis pick and roll. And uh, they got it done. So, yeah. Giannis, 50 points. Absolutely incredible. But anyways, thanks for watching this video, guys. Leave a like. Subscribe to this channel for more NBA content. And I'll see you guys next time.